Hello, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Mark Blanton, the owner of The Real South Africa. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm well. Great. Great to hear that. So tell us, what is The Real South Africa? What does your business do? <laughs> My business, we, well, we do a lot. Um, but our main focus is trying to, you know, educate, you know, those that are in the diaspora about South Africa. Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of bad information out there. And so what our company does is not only do we kind of, you know, through our YouTube channel, The Real South Africa, we kind of show people this is what we do on a regular basis as African-Americans here in South Africa. And then we also give you the opportunity to come here as a tourist and, and see it for yourself. So, you know, a lot of times if you see it for yourself, then you're like, OK, this is different from what I've heard. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you guys are, you know, 9,000 miles away in, in America. Um, you guys have zero clue what happens here. So we just want to bring a little bit um, um, to the people so they can start having a connection point um, with um, Africa or, or, the, or the continent. And they can start feeling you know, good about themselves because they get an opportunity to come to Africa. So that's what we do. Awesome. And what inspired you to start the business? <laughs> As, that's interesting. You know, I, I came on a trip myself. I came here. I used to be a government worker a long, long, long time ago. I used to um, work for the U.S. Secret Service. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, uh, 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 Vice President Joe Biden came here on a trip and I, I got to come and um, it, it blew me. It blew me away. I couldn't believe what I saw, you know, from black people on, a, on in Africa. Keep in mind that I had been to several different nations on the, you know, in the Western world. Um, because of the job that I had. And then before that, I was U.S. Army. So I traveled there as well. I came here and I was totally um, blown. So I was like, you know, I, I, I want people to see this. So I got to form uh, an, an apparatus. And since, uh, you know, we've been business people for a long time, um, it was this simple to just start a company that actually, you know, does what we do. Mm. And when did you move to South Africa? And what part of South Africa? Okay, good. That's a good question. I've I physically moved here in 2018, um, not knowing that there was going to be COVID coming, but we came, mm -hmm. and um, it was good. It was good. It was great. And keep in mind that my journey, you know, and I say a journey because some people, you know, they don't understand that they think I just just upped and moved one day. Actually, our journey started in 2010, 2011, and going all the way through, and we got very familiar. So I decided to ultimately say, okay, it makes more sense to be here. Mm -hmm. um you know then to be there and right now i currently live in johannesburg johannesburg okay joe bird mm -hmm. and what do you enjoy the most about living in johannesburg ah, it's very metropolitan it's very metropolitan for one is 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 um culturally is very rich um mm -hmm. most of the most of the um, tribes that we have here in south africa um, from the Zulus to the Kosas uh, to, to, to the Songas, everyone, um, they all have a stakeholder here in Johannesburg. So you could just be anywhere and run into different people with different views because they have different cultures. Even though they're all Black, they have different cultures and they're on full display here in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how would you describe the process of getting your business set up out there? Say that again? How would you describe the process of getting your business set up, like forming the business? Well, actually, what we did was we formed it in the U.S. So we're, we're, we're a U.S. Um, company. Um, well, we just happen to live here. So what we do is we, you know, we, we get access to all the tourism mechanisms here in South Africa. They invite us to all the trade shows. We get to talk with the, uh, with the tourism bureaus, regardless if it's a provincial, which is a state bureau, or it could be a, a federal, which is like South Africa tourism. And then of course, um, several other tourism bureaus to include all the, 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 the very nice hotels, restaurants. They all work with us because they want, um, you know, the American market to start frequenting um, South Africa. So what we did was we just set it up as a, as a LLC in the United States. But then um, since we came here and formed these relationships, it really helps um, help us to be able to, you know, find some of the best um, attractions, the best situations, so we can offer it 
to those um, in the in the in the diaspora, which is primarily um, North America and in the UK, and of course our Caribbean people, we take care of them as well. Of course. So, what can a um, a customer or someone that signs up for your service, what can they expect? Uh, I'm, I'm laughing because most of our people, when they come here, they they really don't know what to expect. They they see the videos and they're like, "Wow, you know, that's nice." Well, I get that. Well, the answer is what we do is like, everything that we offer, we actually go to these places. We go, we spend time, we, we, we've talked to the GMs, maybe the owners of the locations, and then we decide, okay, is this what an African-American would want to do? You know, for example, um, normally you have situations where people are saying, um, for example, the tourism girls, they think that we all want to go to the bush and we do want to go to the bush, but we want to spend a day or so there. And then we want to move on to all the other nice things. You know, they don't consider that tourism. You know, it, mm -hmm. for them, it's going to the bush. So we slant it to the point to where, yes, you're going to get that. But there are a lot of five, four or five star scenarios here in, in Johannesburg from jazz clubs to some of the best restaurants to, you know, some of the hotels that are just that are just blow your mind away that a lot of us will come and they're they'll be a little nervous about going in because it's really nice and they don't realize that they belong in these situations. So we expose them to the, the, the culture and the couture here in South Africa. That's, that's, that is basically what they, they can expect. Is there a large population of African-Americans in um, Joburg or South Africa that you've noticed? Um, the answer to that question is I, I see Americans from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, and the answer to that question is no. Um, are, they, are there a lot of Europeans that come here as tourists? Yes. Are there a lot of um, Americans, white Americans per se, that come here as tourists? Yes. Do we have a lot of African Americans coming here as tourists? The answer to that question is no. Um, so do we have a lot of people living here? We do have a lot of, a lot of some Black Americans that have found their way here. Um, a lot of them have maybe stopped in Ghana. I'm going to live here. I'm going to live in Tanzania, um, Rwanda. And then they they found out now they're on the continent. Now they're finding out more about South Africa and its infrastructure and all that it has. And then they end up coming down here and just planting roots and then, you know, enjoying the rest of their life. Because now they're like, I was told not to come to South Africa, but this was the place I should have been the whole time. And mm -hmm. so... So there are some here, and I think that the, the numbers are increasing uh, as far as the people that are deciding to reside here. Um, our company itself, we helped a couple of people, several people, um, you know, relocate from the U.S. because we do have a small component of that as well. And they have, they're buying homes and, and putting kids in school and the whole nine right here in South Africa. So what does that service entail? What does the relocation process entail? Well, what we try to do, obviously, we got to follow the rules um, of, 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 of the, here we call it home affairs, in the States we would call it immigration. So there are several different visas that, that you may qualify for. And if you do um, qualify uh, for a particular visa, uh, we have a team of people that will assist you in getting that, getting it from point A to point B, um, mm -hmm. because the, the verbiage is a little different. It could be a little, di it could be a little challenging. To uh, how can I say it could be a little challenging to you know to get it completed and you know, what do it exactly do they want? Well, we got a team of people that can do that. Okay. Um, you know, four people. Uh, after that, the biggest part, and we tell everyone, you know, you can't come here sight unseen. So what happens is people come here on a trip with us, and then you know we take them around, we take them to the cultural places, we take them everywhere, and they're not yeah they are technically a tourist, but they're out and about. They're, they're meeting people. It's not like we keep you in a bubble. You're out and about, and then you get comfortable with, um, with South Africa. And then that motivates you to do what you need to do. So then once you get here, you're looking at purchasing a home. We, you know, we got teams of people that can assist you with renting a home or purchasing if you choose to do that, which right now the, the, the exchange rate is very favorable. It's 17 to 1 which is excellent. Um, when I first got here, it was nine to one. And I thought I was balling out many years ago. So I'm happy with being here. Um, and a lot of us that are African-Americans that's been here, um, they, they really enjoy it. And then of course, lastly, 
um, a lot of our people who come here as the as a tourist, they're like, you know what, I need to come back. And then they they're gone a few months and they come back. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of them are looking at trying to relocate. Interesting. And mm. what if any like trends or changes in the perception about traveling to Africa have you noticed? Like I know the people that come there are already like, okay, I'm sold, I'm coming back. But are you seeing that people who haven't been at all, like there's an increase in people who are interested in visiting for the first time? Yes, um, across the board. Um, I'm I'm gonna say it's a grassroots movement. Um, There are other people that are on YouTube and then there's a lot of people that are, 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 I guess they are not as as infatuated with the US and the and the UK as much as they used to be. And they're they're looking for other options. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes it's Europe, sometimes it's South America, Central America. Um, but we've found that, you know, those that let me give you an example. Somebody says, Well, I'm going to go to Panama, they're black there. And then they get there and they find out that they don't fit in and in, in, in any way. Um and of course, some people do love it and whatnot, but then they end up coming to Africa and then they're like, this is what I've been looking for the whole time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those people literally were trying everything in their power to avoid it. But then when you finally when you finally come and you get on that, you get on that plane and you look around and you would assume that you would have a bunch of other black people making that decision as well. But the reality is you will see a bunch of white people on these planes Mm. flying all over Africa with no inhibitions whatsoever. They're not talking about crime. They're not talking about all this stuff. They just want to come enjoy this weather. They want to, they want to see the culture. Um, And, and, and just being in Africa just changes everything. It changes everything. And so that's what, that's, that's what I've noticed as far as trends are concerned. Interesting. And Mm -hmm. for you personally, what was the biggest culture shock? initially? Well, (laughs) you know, I'm here in South Africa. There's not a lot of culture shock down here. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the things you'll find in the States, you'll find here. Mm -hmm. Um, I will also say to you that, how can I say it? Um, A lot of the, the, you know, all your U.S. stuff you have, and then you also have your South African stuff. So culturally, you are expanding your horizons. Mm -hmm. Um, beyond what you already know. I'm gonna give you a a good example. We had a family that came here and we took them to this little, you know, a normal Sunday market. Everybody's there, had music and so forth. Kids were out and they asked, they asked me, they said, is this like a a black, um, you know, African festival or something? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, this is just Sunday. This is just what we do. Um, So I think people are culturally, for me, um, I, I I think, you know, I, I would have an anxiety if I did, an anxiety, the true anxiety if they said, hey, Mark, you need to go back to the U.S. for X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people come here and they they don't miss a beat and they end up adding to what they already know. Right. And then they go back to the States and then they're like, that's where the cultural issues are because they go back and they're like, man, I wish I was in South Africa. This is, I'm missing it. So I don't know if that answers the question, sure. but yeah, yeah. That, that's what most people are. Interesting. And what are some of the most important factors to consider when moving to South Africa? Hmm. First of all, I think a lot of people have an idea of what it is from afar, like 9,000, 10,000 miles away. And then once they get here, um, they're going to be blown away. Most people don't know that. They're going to be just blown away. Um, and then I think, how can I say it? I, I, you know, I think people, once they get here, they don't, and then you, then you don't want to go home. Most people don't want to go home. You're going to make friends, you know, immediately um, once you get here. Everybody's going to call you, you know, brother. You know, if you're a sister, they're going to call you sissy. You know, these are the things that happen down here. It's amazing you know, what's, what's actually going on down here. Right. But a lot of us, we, we won't take the time to, to find out what's going on, not just here, but mm-hmm. in, in all parts of Africa. There are, there are alcoves everywhere where you can go and not be concerned about being black, be part of the majority, which some people may not feel it's a big deal. But the reality is, if you've never been in the majority before, 
and, and felt it, then it, yeah, it might not mean nothing to you, but if you wish you'd done it, yeah, you're gonna always wanna be part of that majority all the time. Yeah, so if someone is listening to this or watching this now and they're like, okay, Mark, you know what? I'm sold, <laughs> I wanna move to South Africa, just based on what you said in this interview, what yeah. checklist, what should they check off their boxes before they should start making that move or planning that, uh, that trip? Visit as much as you can be before coming. Um, uh, number two, form a relationship with Africa. Keep in mind, you're not going to another smaller America or bigger America. You are leaving America. So I would say check check your stuff at customs. Once you go through customs, you're not, you know, you're not, you know, dumping out into America. You're actually going into Africa. So get to know what's going on. And, and doing that on the ground makes a, it's a, completely different than than honestly watching you know videos or even reading about it you know you're going to have to come and, and visit so i think that's the one of the biggest um you know checklist and then i think lastly is that you're going to have to uh, you know you heard me say leave your americanness at customs i mean you still are an american right. people will respect that but you got to turn around and you got to respect the african cultures that you are um, in, meaning that you need to, I'm not gonna say you gotta learn all the languages and learn everything, but you at least gotta respect the cultures that you're going to, you know? You might see something that you say, wow, this is a, you know, this, I don't wanna be part of that and you don't have to. However, there's a lot here that you wanna be part of, just like in the United States. Right. Um, that's probably the biggest thing is just come and, 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 and see it for yourself. And you will be surprised how life changing it is. Um, just coming here as a tourist anywhere on the continent. Um, I mean, I represent South Africa. Um, you know, our job, uh, what we uh, set our company up to do, is to expose African Americans to what's possible um, here in South Africa. And then once they have exposed themselves, then they can do whatever they want. We just had a young lady that was here just a few minutes ago who came through our company. And she moved here. She she lives around the corner, and uh, we were just talking about, you know, she's from LA, you know, we're and she's fairly new, so she's still talking about the differences mm -hmm. between, you know, the U.S. and South Africa. But eventually, that will fall off because she's going to start being more, um, you know, South Africa leaning because she lives here. You talk to South Africans every day. You pick up the accent. Yeah. It is what it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So in terms of your business, what is the ultimate goal? Where do you see your company in the next five years? Ooh, <laughs> that's a good question. I, 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 would like to, I would like for it to be a scenario where it's, where it's mainstream. Mm -hmm. You know, people are saying, okay, it's summertime. I, 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 I need to take the kids to Africa. Mm -hmm. And then our company can sort that out for you. Be more mainstream where people are looking at it, at it as an option to travel um places you know they've never traveled before right. and you know even the air is better here the food is better here right. to have those experiences and for us um over the next five years to be able to offer that to our people because we both know you know what we go through on a, on a regular basis you know um, in the u.s right and sometimes you just need a break you just need to have a mental health break and you just need to be around black people and black people just don't mean African Americans. There are other black people that think like you, feel like you, eat the same type of food you do, and so forth. So that's why, you know, we feel less over the next five years, if we can make this mainstream and I can sit back one day as an older gentleman and say, you know what, this is nice to see a whole plane of African Americans getting off the plane here in OR Tambo. International Airport in Johannesburg, coming to explore. That would be nice. That's awesome. And you just mentioned something that reminded me about uh, another question that I had or thought mm -hmm. that's always on my mind is the statement of, oh, Africans don't like African-Americans. So I was literally in an Uber the other day and the driver didn't know I was from Nigeria. And he was like, yeah, you know, those Africans don't mess with us. So he and I had a nice, and literally it was a good conversation because I asked him like, yeah. why are you saying that? How many Africans do you know? Like, you don't know a billion Africans. Like, why do you have this, you know, perception? So at the end of the day, it was a great conversation. You know, he's a really cool yeah. guy. I'm sure it was, you know, 
he got um, a lot of information for me as well. So when mm -hmm. you hear things of that nature, like what are your thoughts there about the whole, oh, they don't mess with us, we don't mess with them, that type of thing. What are your thoughts there? I think I think a lot of that is is you know I mean I'm sure they have some personal experiences you know us all us black people don't get along um, you know even people in black people in the same family don't get along so there's going to be scenarios like that but what I found and find here is the fact that when I'm in the U S when I turn the TV on I don't see any African um, television networks and they make and produce a lot of great content some of this stuff you guys need to see. Like, I mean, obviously, let me, let me, let me go a little left for a little bit. You know, like we have a show called Real Housewives of Johannesburg. And of mm -hmm. course, y'all guys, we have the Real Housewives of Atlanta, New York. We got that franchise here. Mm -hmm. And um, so they know our culture. Like, for example, um, Black culture uh, in the U.S., they know it cold because they see it all the time yeah. on TV. But do we know anything about their culture? Um, I, I had a gentleman ask me one time, he says, do they teach them, which is the South Africans, Black culture? And I said, what do you mean? He was like, no, like, do they teach them, like, about Martin Luther King, Harriet Tugman? Do they teach them stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And I said, this is a whole other country. They have their own history to teach their own people. And they have, you know, a plethora, if not more people that fought in the, in the, in the freedom struggle and, and, and South African heroes that they need to continue to pass along, um, you know, to their people. And so when you, you know, you're talking Steve Biko or Chris Hani and things like that, which again, just flew over most, uh, you know, people in the U.S.'s head, these are giants down here. These are giants yeah. um, and, and very important people like Martin Luther King. But so, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for um, sharing that. So where can people find out more about your company? Okay, we have, we have a very robust website um, where you can you know, look at you know, what's available, what trips that you can get on. You can actually, you know, if you decide that you wanna uh, come on a particular day, stay for six days, 10 days, 13 days, you'll find that on our website, which is therealsouthafrica.com. Very robust um, website. And then of course, if you look, if you wanna, like, for example, on that same website, we have testimonials. We've done probably hundreds of people that came and mm -hmm. they decided that they wanted to do an interview with us. And we've, we've you know, recorded those interviews and put them on, on our YouTube channel. And of course, you can find them on our, on our um, website as well. But um, YouTube, The Real South Africa, you can go there, subscribe. And then, of course, we, we upload, you know, fairly regularly there. So those are like the two main places people find us. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat, Mark. I appreciate it. And best of luck with everything with your business. Thank you. And you as well, Shop Black. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Take care. All right. Thank you. <laughs>